AFDX is an avionics communications bus that has been mandated by both Boeing and Airbus for use in new civilian avionics designs. This tutorial provides a brief introduction to the central features of a AFDX, also known as ARINC 664 Part 7. Be advised that this tutorial takes into account a prior knowledge of the Ethernet protocol. AFDX replaces ARING 429 and ARING 629. ARING 429 has point-to-point -point wiring which is heavy and trouble prone. ARING 629 is complex and expensive. Ethernet is very cheap, very well proven and being constantly improved by the industry. Unfortunately, Ethernet is not real-time and often loses packets. Ethernet has only a rudimentary ability to prioritize packets by packet type, whereas avionics has clear differences between periodic time critical data and background data transfers. AFDX takes advantage of Ethernet's proven technology while adding its own requirements to cater it to avionics applications. By limiting the bandwidth for each end system, AFDX can guarantee that each packet sent will, will be received within acceptable parameters. Defining three types of packets lets the system distinguish between the different kinds of data used on aircraft. The most critical change to standard Ethernet is the predefinition of the path from each data source to each data destination. Since aircraft are closed systems, this is easily done and guarantees the same path and timing is used each time a packet is transferred. Switches are programmed with the paths based on, a, on data in the MAC header. Limiting the data that each end system may transmit guarantees that the switches are not overloaded. The idea of a virtual link is based on the ARING 429 label which may be transmitted from a single transmitter to multiple receivers. In AFDX, the switch is responsible for this routing. It may route a single input to several output ports. If multiple input ports need to be transmitted to the same output port, the switch will buffer some of the data. The system architect will assign the bag values for each virtual link. The bag assignments guarantee that the switch buffers will be large enough for all contingencies. Because these buffers are filled first in, first out, there will be some unpredictable timing behavior. This is accounted for in the jitter calculation and does not affect the real time status. The top line of this diagram shows the transmitting end system transmitting a packet once per bag. During the course of transmission delays may be introduced resulting in a gap between the time the message was expected and the time it was actually received. The blue lines show these delays which represent the jitter in the system. The virtual link determines the path and frequency of the data to be transferred. It does not define the contents. The contents are defined a level below the virtual link. Up to four sub-VLs or ports may be defined per VL. They share the bag slot on a round-robin basis. ARINC 653 defines the basic data types used in avionics applications. Sampling data, typified by engineering data such as altitude, latitude, and longitude, tends to repeat itself. The form of the data doesn't change, although, of course, the values do change. New data always replaces old data. Queuing data such as video never repeats itself and may therefore use multiple buffers for efficiency. New data is added to old data rather than replacing it. 
Retries are not permitted in AFDX and there is only a single path from a given transmitter to a given receiver. To prevent data loss, dual redundant systems are used in which the data is sent over two networks simultaneously. The receiver throws out the second of the redundant messages to come in. The sequence number together with the VL address is used to determine if packets are redundant. Another use of the sequence number is to detect end system malfunction. As seen in line 3, a malfunction may cause the same packet to be transmitted over and over. The integrity check of line 5 sees that the sequence numbers are not increasing by 1 or 2 and rejects all the bad packets on network B. Each end system is physically connected to two different networks. Each message is sent simultaneously on both networks. The receiver accepts whichever comes in first and throws out the second. The specification allows the user to select not to implement redundancy on a VL by VL basis. Now the top line shows the transmitter sending out a packet at the start of each bag. The next two lines show when the data is actually received by the end system. The final line shows that only the first copy of each packet is returned to the application. Now to summarize, the hardware attributes of AFDX are all taken directly from the Ethernet specification making use of the considerable knowledge and experience of the market in this universally used spec. By adding bags and VLs, it has been turned into a real-time bus. The further addition of dual redundancy and sequence numbers add the robustness necessary for avionics applications. If you would like more information on Excalibur's hardware and software products that support AFDX, please visit our website at www.mil-1553.com. Thank you.